this morning. I do hope that you are. We're happy to have you here this morning. I'm grateful for everyone that's come out today. I look forward to the message that we have this morning. I'll invite you to stand to your feet. Go shake someone's hand if you haven't already, or just stay where you are. I can't tell you what to do. But I wanted to sing number 40 from our praise book. It's called, Therefore the Redeemed of the Lord. Some of you know this. It's real simple to pick up on if you don't know this one. But go say hi to somebody. Tell them you're glad to see them. Even if you're not, tell them that you are. It's okay. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return And come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy shall be upon them. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. And everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads they shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return And come with singing unto Zion And everlasting joy shall be upon their heads And everlasting joy shall be upon their heads Song number eight. Most 
most of you know this song. It's called Humble Thyself. And I'm going to have some, some help with that this morning, if y'all could help me today. This is one of those songs that, I don't know, the words of it are just perfect. It's something that we need to have in our hearts all the time. That no matter what's going on, we need to remember to be humble before the Lord. Humble thyself in the sight of 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 the Lord. And he, and he will lift you up higher and higher. That's the whole song. We're going to sing that through one or two more times. Sing it with us, okay? Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. 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 singing with us. Church, you may be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning. morning. Oh, it sounds good. Are y'all awake yet? <laughs> Amen. Thank the Lord to say he sent us some rain today. Amen. Thankful for that. It's not ice or snow. Amen. I should pray for those that's traveling, those that's out sick with this old flu bug and colds and things. And those that's recuperating from that, Lord bless you. And she keep Mary uh, Dow in prayer. She's been suffering with that too. And um, just want to have a and, uh, shout out to uh, Dr. Fletcher Hubbard. Those is W L L L. Is that right? Uh, radio. He's 91. Amen. And he's a precious soul. He really is him and his wife and family, and uh, just awesome, awesome people. So we shout out his happy birthday to him. Uh, also, I uh, know is uh, my son-in-law, Kevin Overstreet. He's having a birthday today. And um, Hope Hughes, her birthday is on the 31st. That's the ones I know of. So happy anniversary and birthday to y'all this month. Um, as you keep uh, Tracy Donald in your prayer of Living Waters Church, passing of her mother is my aunt, Mabel uh, Childers Bursch. So we send out our prayers to them and that family. Um, keep Lenny Glazer. He's still at home recuperating from surgery. He's doing okay. Keep him in, 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 in your prayers. Um, and Duff, she's here. Amen. Lord. <laughs> we through a lot this past week. Amen. Praying for that. And Mike's mother, she's getting a little better. Amen. Praying for her too. Um, Ada's, the one child, Ada Duval, that remember her, uh, the late Ada Duval, her granddaughter is in Paris. Just got there. Never even been out to the United States. And uh, But you keep her... Uh, Keep her uh, in your prayers as well. And um, also a, a young lady that's missing, 15-year-old Olivia Carson Moore. It's been on Facebook. She's from Forest, Virginia. If you see her or her see anything, call 911. Amen. We'll shout that out this morning and ask you to pray for her 
and her safe return and, and ask some blessings and prayers for her family. And um, so I'm glad you're all here this morning. God bless you for being here. And I'm going to ask um, Dr. Glenn Dawson to come forward this morning. He's got our morning round robin. Amen. Let's put your hands together for Dr. Dawson. Amen. Come on up. Let me tell you, I, uh, I'm guilty. God help me, I'm guilty. I was back there talking to my wife, and I was about to miss that call to come up here. Um, Y'all pray for me the next time I go to Paris. I, I've been to Paris quite a few times. Paris, Texas, picking up beans. And um, I liked it. Back in the woods, and the, um, you can drive along, and you see these swamplands in East Texas, and when the old cattle are standing there, one of them's got a white bird on its back, picking fleas and ticks off of them. But it's kind of a neat place. Now, to get serious, you know, we've been... I, I got this, uh, and I got the notes still, but I'm not going to preach it to you. I got this barn burner about what Amos would say to the, church, to the church today and to America today. But I'm saving that because the Lord has prompted me to go another direction. And uh, if I'm anything, I try to be obedient because I spent most of my life being disobedient. So um, we've been having prayer meeting. I thought, man, you know what? We have prayer meeting on Friday night. We've been doing it for... I don't know, 60-something-odd weeks. Yep. And um, we've seen prayer answered, and we've seen prayer answered, and we've seen prayer answered. And it's all for the glory of God. And, you know, we serve a God that wants us to pray to Him for a lot of reasons. So I thought I'd talk to you about prayer. Uh, of course, you're all invited anytime you want to come. Uh, let's open in prayer. Father God, we worship and praise you today, O oh God. Hallelujah. We bind every force that would divert our thoughts, O oh Lord, from, from you this morning and away to other things. O oh God, we present our sin to you and admit that we do have faults. In Jesus' name, Lord, open our eyes today that we may see in the spiritual what we cannot see in the natural. Hallelujah. Reveal to us, Lord, the invisible things of the spiritual realm. God, in Jesus' name, we destroy the spirits of resistance, hindrance, revenge, retaliation, and retribution that are trying to come against our families in this country, our ministries everywhere, that, that we are called, that these ministries that we are called to, Lord, we ask you to bind those things. Let them destroy each other in Jesus' name. And I declare today that we will not hear the whisper of Satan. Lord Jesus, we thank you for victory. We thank you for your promises because through these prayers we take the offensive and by the Holy Spirit that lives in us, Lord, we will accept the anointing that you've placed on every Christian's life. And all, all of us say in Jesus' name, amen. You know, uh, we've gotten so busy that we look and we find and we seek excuses not to not to do what God has called us to do. We stop raising our children. We have classes taught at universities and seminaries, and the students think that children should be separate always from their families at church because they are a distraction. I don't, just, I don't take mine out, and I'll tell you why, and I never have. It's because I want them to see me worship, and I want them to see me, and I'm not against Sunday school and Sunday church in certain it's it helpful in times. But uh, as they get older, they need to see us worship. And brothers and sisters, we need not only worship in front of them, we need to live out our Christian walk in front of them, which includes prayer and which includes decent living, which includes honoring God in all things and giving God glory. So as we think about prayer, <clears throat> let me tell you something. First point is, we can't always pray as we would. We, we don't, sometimes we're distracted. Sometimes we're sick. Sometimes we're just not able. But God wants us to pray as we can. Whatever we can do, we need to do it. The words don't always come. Listen, when I, when I go on Friday night, 
I feel like the most needy person there. I feel like I need prayer worse. I feel like my prayers don't always, I, I'm not one to sit here and say, I, I know I can pray. We had somebody, I had somebody come to me and say, I knew that I needed to find you. And my thought in the back of my mind, although I didn't say it to, and some of you were present, was what you needed is to find God. And you can find God anywhere you whisper his name. That's right. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God, and he's going to meet your need if there's any faith. Not if you've got enough faith. If there's any. Our Lord Jesus said, if you just got just a, not just a mustard seed. And I, I got a mustard seed. I don't wear it today, but I got one. I wear on my lapel sometimes. You don't need a lot. You just got to have some. That's right. Yeah. And when he calls upon you, or you're prompted by the Spirit, you need to open your mouth and do what you can. Because we have an intercessor that will do the rest. Praise Him. Um, we can't become spiritually fit by avoiding the mercy seat. The mercy seat to us is, is in us. The holy temple is in us. We come into church when I was a kid and we would say, the Lord is in His holy temple. Sing that at high church. I went to a, a high church. You know, everybody had a spit shine on and, uh, and, and they sang the Lord is in his holy temple and he's you know now and forever shall be and, and uh, that's nice but um, the holy temple's here that's right. so to say a prayer is just to open your mouth we repent because we cannot repent sometimes and we groan because we cannot groan this is Pray into the Holy Spirit. We ask God to give us the words because we, don't, we can't utter them. We don't know what to say. We want to pray, but we don't. So we pray until we do pray. I know that sounds off, but, you know, I, I'm, that's what I'm telling you. So let me tell you this little couplet as I go in here. I want to share it with you. This is old. You may not know it. It's from a song. Satan trembles where tra Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saint upon his knees. And so I don't care how weak you are, open your mouth. No matter what it and if you can't speak, cry, and if you can't cry, groan. And if you can't groan, let there be groans which cannot be uttered. Holy Spirit is there in you for a reason to lead you, to guide you to pray for you, to intercede for you, to ask God for you. And Jesus is our advocate. He sits at the right hand of the Father and He seals it with His blood. Amen. And if it's sealed with His blood, it will be heard. God the Father will hear it. My big, my big beef, I guess, over the last 62 weeks, it's not a beef, but I always go back to it, is we got to, we got to, steadfastly stand on our faith. Don't say I don't have faith. If you're saved and you've asked God into your life, you got faith. You may not be living right, but you got some, and so he's going to correct you and you're going to have to receive that. That's right. Just, just do what he says. Look, I'm not, a, I'm not a wonderful person. I was not a nice person. Uh, and when I got saved at first, I wasn't a particularly nice person. You know, self-seeking, self-centered. Well, like most guys, you know, uh, and, and uh, it took a while for the Lord to really get to me where I knew that I was nothing. And said, sometimes you've got you to lose a little bit to gain a lot. So, um, you know, I talk about groaning and uttering what can't be uttered. If you can't do that, I like this. This is... Charles Haddon Spurgeon, just breathe a prayer. He's, he's, let me get back over here. Spurgeon says, and you know this, mothers, especially young mothers, your child doesn't have to do anything but just whimper, and you know what it needs. And our Father in heaven, all we have to do is just whimper, just think a, a prayer of, of uh, obedience, of, uh, of contrition, of whatever's going on. He hears it. Just like a mother would hear, and even more so than a mother. When, when Daniel started praying, 
God already, and you did that this morning, God already knew the prayer before it got to him, already started answering it immediately, and the rest was a fight to get there. But he came. You know, one other thing, I guess the second point I want to make is, and I started making it early, is we find, you know, lots of us say, I need you because I don't know how to pray. I need you because I know your prayers get through the ceiling. That's why I'm telling you, I might pray like I, I know they do, but there are times when Satan whispers, and that's what, that's what we have to, that's why we stay focused on what little faith we have, whatever amount. We still, we can we all can get through. I said this Friday night, and I want to say it again, that when, when you, you just got to have a little bit, but you got to hang on to it. You got to hang on, step in, get nasty, get dirty, as, as Clint Eastwood would, would say, just dig in and move forward. You just keep praying. You just keep asking. You just keep seeking. You just keep knocking. If you believe and trust God and you've given your life to God, just because the prayer is not answered today, you know fully well if you've got crazy faith. I like that because John Ramirez says he got crazy faith. He's just like stupid that. enough to believe that God's going to do what he asked. And so uh, if you believe that and you like that, then you just got to keep on. John Ramirez, I'll tell you a quick story. He walks into a church. You know, John Ramirez was saved through that, um, the same ministry that your, your dad was saved through, uh, um, uh, Demetrius. Um, <clears throat> on the streets of New York and uh, serving Satan, he was a tarot card reader and all kinds of things. Didn't get saved until he was past 40. And I will tell you, he walks, he's saved. He's given his life to Christ. He's bound everything that's messed with his life. He goes into a church, and there's a Hindu woman there because she's got, uh, uh, she's in her last stages of cancer, and they told her to call her family to give her up for dead. And he was prompted by the Holy Spirit, and he says, if you'll believe, God will heal you right now. That's all he said to her. And she said, I believe. He said, well, the next step is to give your life to Christ. He went back five years later. This woman's standing at the door waiting for him. He doesn't even remember her. He said, I pray for so many people so often, I didn't even remember her. And he said, she grabbed me and says, I'm the Hindu that stood at the back door. And um, he said, he started crying. She had brought more people to that church than any other member of the church since she got saved. We have got to believe that God's going to work through us. Times are getting hard, and it's time for the church to step up and do what they're supposed to do. And I believe the church is failing because everybody's not praying. I wasn't praying enough, so when God prompted me to do prayer ministry, I thought, who, me? But I'm telling you, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and pray, he would say, I'll heal the nation. We have to, we have to believe that he's going to do it. So... Just because you feel like your prayer is too weak, don't let it shut your mouth because that, that thought is a satanic thought. Satan does everything he can to keep you from opening your mouth. Well, I'm too weak a Christian. I just haven't been in, the, I just haven't, don't know the Lord that well. Let me tell you what, if you know him at all, you know him well enough to pray because you started out in prayer just like Jesus. You started out by a prayer of contrition at the altar. Lord, I'm a sinner. I know it. I turn away from those ways. I give my life to Christ. I let him into my heart. I want you to dwell in my heart. I want you to change me. That's where it starts. You just keep praying. We got to watch this little smutty, sooty thing that happens, though. Don't think our church, my church, my ministry, because it's not. It doesn't belong to us. I pray that God would bless this church. But I pray that he won't make, I won't think it's because of anything I'm doing. It's because of what he does. Right. He's going to fill one somewhere. I mean, I'd like for it to be here, but if it's up at the Jesus Center, 
That's good. It's answered prayer. So I'm not, you know, what you got to do is watch, watch how your mind goes because Satan likes to get in that mix and say, look, look, look what you're doing. You're being real good, man. You're filling your church. Look at the money. Look, look, you know, look at the women. They like you. I mean, it happens to young pastors, old pastors too, all the time. Catch you at a weakness. Be praying about that. That's why we need to pray for our pastors and pray for our congregation. Pray one for another. Pray without ceasing. Because the tempter is called the tempter for a reason. Amen. I'm going to get now, folks. So, um, a little, another thought that I thought of, prayer is not measured by outward expression. Now, David probably remembers about four weeks I talked about it a little bit. It's not how loud you are. It's not how eloquent your English is or Spanish or whatever. It's not how many scriptures you know. It's what's in here. That's right. It's that you are like King David, that you reveal everything about yourself to God when you realize it. Confession. It's wonderful for the soul. We've got to be careful because uh, God gives us sanctification and grace. And if we're not careful, we try to equal it with education and rhetoric. No. Nope. Don't go there. Listen, Hannah prayed. Listen, and she prayed and she mumbled and she she's prayed and, and, and what did the priest say? She's come to the temple drunk. But her prayer was answered. It doesn't matter who understands what you say. It's that you pray. The last thing I want you to think about Feeblest of prayers are heard in, he, heard in heaven. Doesn't matter how feeble they're heard. Sincerity is the key. And I've said this, I'm going to go through it. God hears his children because they're his. He hears them, some that aren't his, but he hears his children first. And. Um, you know what I like? Our most imperfect prayer is, perfect, is perfected by Jesus. We confess our faith. This is something I want you to start thinking about. Confessing your faith. Telling people about your faith. Confession of your faith. Uh, that very confession puts power in what you're saying, puts power in your prayers, no matter how eloquent or how, how poor. It puts power in them. Confession of, it don't matter, we'll get it later. And um, <laughs> so we're disciples. We are disciples. And a confessing faith, uh, whosoever we forgive, because we have confessed, will be forgiven in heaven. Remember, Jesus told his disciples, you forgive on earth, it's forgiven in heaven. You bind on earth is bound in heaven. You loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And so um, that is our power. And uh, just a couple of closing thoughts, and I'm going to be out of here, I guess. A um, couple of things that I wanted to tell you that I believe about prayer. I believe that, and you, some of the people that come on Friday night have heard this. I believe that not only does it motivate God to get him to do something, I believe that our prayers release the Holy Spirit through us. That's not much to confirm that in the Bible. There's a few things. But by praying, see, God's going to be good anyway. God is good. We don't, he doesn't need us to pray, but he wants us to pray because it develops relationship. And I know I've hit it three times. Let's see if I can go for four. Um, it develops a relationship, and it helps us get a closer walk. Look, if you don't talk to somebody after a while, it's like they're not there. You got to talk. Talk to your Father in heaven. And whatsoever you ask and declare, He will do. We can travail in prayer, moan and groan, whatever you want to call it. 
be serious and God will answer. That's one type of prayer that does a little more than others sometimes. We can also, Ephesians 6, 17, we use the word as a sword and declare and, and declare and decree. See, I put my hand in my pocket. What God will do. And it'll be done. We need to, we need to use prayer to declare some things. I declare that this country is going to change. That's going to be an outpouring. That's going to be a restoration. I don't know if it's going to be the whole country, but I believe firmly in my heart that that's going to be a noticeable outpouring. I believe that we all need to pray about it. And I'm going to ask you to join me in that prayer. And uh, also, laying on of hands is the impartation of the Holy Spirit. It can be impartation of healing. But most cases in the Bible, it was, it was an impartation to give someone power and Holy Spirit to go out and do God's work. And we lay hands on preachers as we ordain them. Okay, um, with that said, let me tell you, do not, do not ignore the great opportunity to spend time with God. If you find it laboring, set up a time and do it anyway. But you got to talk if you just want to think. You know, I tell people it's okay, a thought is heard. But, you know, Jesus says, not in, not in Luke, but in, uh, I want to say, <clears throat> might be Mark. He says, when the disciples asked him how to pray, he, he said to say. Not think, not write. He said to say. And um, so when you get an opportunity... You voice your opinions to God. Ask God to help your church. Ask God to increase your faith because faith can be. Every man is given a measure of faith that's saved, but it can be increased through prayer as a gift to God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you've given us this tool as well as this opportunity for relationship with you, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, that we can bind on earth and it'll, you'll do it for us in heaven. We thank you, Lord, that you've instructed us in such a way. We thank and praise you, Lord, that our faith will grow as we pray. We'll see lives saved, people healed, demonic forces turned back, and, Lord, we'll see all this in the, as, you are, as you are glorified through us. And Lord, we look to the time that we receive glorified bodies and we become through prayer more and more like you. And we praise you and we thank you and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm done, brother. <laughs> Join us on Friday nights. We have a community prayer. It starts at 6 30 here at the chapel. Dr. Glenn Dawson runs, leads that, runs it, puts it together, and I appreciate him and all that come out for that. And uh, thank you, Brother Glenn. Amen. Prayer. Uh, this time we're going to have our morning tithes and offerings. For deacons to come forward, please.
Anna and I uh, had a really great opportunity some years ago to record uh, a version, our own version of this song on, I think it was our very first album. I think it was. We have copies here, just to let you know. Just kidding. We do, actually. Um, but this song, I don't know, it's something that's always been real special to me, and it's based out of the Book of Psalms. I didn't write this. I'm not sure who did. But this song is called Better Is One Day, and I hope you enjoy it. scripture reading this morning, if I remember correctly. And Children's Church is, and Children's Church is now dismissed. Good morning, church. 
This is what you look like after a week in the hospital and about eight hours, ten hours sleep. I've been on both ends of the hospital running all week with Ann, who's here today, thank God. You know, strokes are serious things, folks. Very serious. I just, we stand on the word of God. That's why she's here today. Now, my mother's still in the hospital with uh, dehydration, and she has picked up C. diff in there. If anyone knows who that is, that's pretty nasty. <laughs> and so, well, hopefully, she's going to be coming home this Monday. So please keep her in the prayers. I also have... My sister's husband is in Duke University getting ready to start a bone marrow transport plant this Wednesday. So he's going through chemo all this week and up to Wednesday. So please keep them in, there in your prayers. Desperate situations call for desperate prayers. So make sure that, that you pray. Always pray. Just like Glenn says, we always need to pray. There's plenty of stuff to pray about. No doubt about it. And especially pray for our country also. I don't know if anyone else can see it, but Jesus said in the end times that right would be wrong and wrong would be right. And I believe it's it, folks. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Anyone who tells you they're going to give you more money back in your paycheck and you've got a problem with that, then I've got a problem with whether or not you're deceived or not. You have been deceived. And I'm telling you, folks, it is funny, but I, I'll be honest with you. Half of this nation right here is deceived and lost. I don't know of any other way to put it. I, I don't know of any other way to put it. And Jesus said, a house divided will not stand. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that right here in our nation right now. So we definitely need to pray. We definitely need to pray for this nation. We need to pray for our church. We need to pray for each other. Plenty of problems. Man, I know we got family problems. There's no doubt about it. Everyone has problems. Just because we're in the church of God, the Lord did not say since we're in his house that we're not going to have problems. I know I got problems. Our family has problems. Everyone has problems. But if you don't have that solid anchor to hang on to, where are you sending your problems? Our government certainly is not going to fix your problems. Although he's tried. I will, I'll give him on. I will give him on up on that. Donald Trump is trying to make America great again. And we've come a long, long way from that, folks. I don't even hardly recognize our nation anymore. We've come, we've fallen so far. But we serve an awesome God. And we know what the plan is. We're going to win this right here. We're going to stand victori victorious in the last day. We're going to. But it's up to us to be there to do that. He's not going to do it for us. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it. Old saying, but very true. And I tell you, I know I say it every Sunday, but I can see those last few granules of sand out of that air glass dropping in that air glass right now. And I do believe the church is going to be full. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Jesus is going to have this church full. He's going to have all church full. And he's given us this opportunity right now to turn from our wicked ways and come back to the way we're supposed to be. He's given us this open window of opportunity to do that. But if we don't do that, then he's going to bring us to this church rocking, I'm telling you. Because everybody that I've talked to and every one of the people that seem to be the modern day prophet, every one of them say that 2018 is going to be the year of shaking. And we're starting to see it already. It's shaking everywhere. But I think it's going to be a shaking right here in this United States. Something that we're not going to ever forget. 9-11 is going to look like a picnic to what's coming. I'm telling you. Not because I say it. Not because I have anything to do with it at all. This book says it. 
So we'd better get on the straight and narrow path and try to get as many people, especially our families and loved ones, back to Jesus. Because the time is running out. Today I'm going to be reading from Mark. Four, I'll be reading uh, 13, chapter 13. I'm going to be reading 26 through 37. I'm coming from the book. This is coming after the Antichrist has stood in the temple and declared himself God. This is after the sun will be dark and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fire from the sky and the paths of heaven will be shaken. This is right after this. This is what Jesus says. And everyone will see the Son of Man arrive on the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send forth his angels to gather together the chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its buds become tender and its leaves begin to sprout, you know without being told that summer is near. Just so. When you see the events I've described beginning to happen, you can be sure that his return is very near, right at the door. I assure you this genera generation will not pass from the scene until all these events have taken place. Hear that? Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will remain forever. However, no one knows the day or the hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. And since you don't know when they will happen, stay alert and keep watch. The coming of the Son of Man can be compared with that of a man who left home to go on a trip. He gave each of his employees instructions about the work they were to do. And he told the gatekeeper to watch for his return. So keep a sharp lookout. For you do not know when the homeowner will return. At evening, midnight, early dawn, or late daybreak. Don't let him find you sleeping when he arrives without warning. What I say to you, this is Jesus. I say to everyone, watch for his return. God honor the bleeding of his word. Yeah. Maybe see it. Going to be looking in just a few minutes in 2 Timothy chapter 3. But I'm going to read another passage to start with from the book of Jude in a moment or so. Over the last few weeks I've spoken on topics that were practical and we could apply to the Christian life and so forth, but every once in a while I have to stop what I'm doing and look around and report on it to you and show you how it compares in the light of Scripture. So very many things have been going on lately that I feel like I need to, to tell you because half of what you see on the news today and you might think I'm a nut, but that's all right. I'm screwed on to a good bolt. But it's staged. Half of it's staged. And you need to know what's really going on. Jude had a similar situation when he was writing his letter. And he said in verse number 3, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. He said, because people have crept in unawares and have tried to change it. And so this morning, I'm going to give you a warning that Paul gives in 2 Timothy chapter 3. And I'm going to show you how it is being fulfilled in front of our eyes. He said in verse number one, This know also that in the last days perilous or dangerous times shall come. And I know a lot of times we sit glued to the tube and we have no idea what's going on around us. But that doesn't change the fact that it's going on around us. 
We know that we are in the last days according to the prophecy set by the word of God. You can find it in Isaiah. You can find it in Zechariah. We're studying that now on Wednesday night. You can find it in Daniel and Ezekiel. And Jesus himself even told us what to watch for. You will never see it on the news, but even now rape gangs are roaming the streets of Sweden and England and the police are ordered to stand down so they won't offend them. I'm telling you the truth. I won't stand down, I can tell you that right now. I am a preacher that packs. I'm the only pastor on TV that has a National Rifle Association cup that he drinks from on the pulpit. I challenge other pastors to get them one. Makes that water taste pretty good. I don't stand down for nothing. Political correctness dictates that we let the wild beast of the jungle back onto our streets and that our laws do not apply to them. This may come as a shock to you, but now places like Denver, Colorado, and San Francisco, California are passing laws allowing the immigrants to defecate on the sidewalks. So we won't offend them by arresting them. We don't let our dogs do that. We got signs up to curb your dog. They got little things to get the stuff up with now. Now the city's going around doing it for immigrants that want to use the bathroom on a public sidewalk. If you don't have enough sense to use a toilet, you don't need to be in America. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Political correctness is far more dangerous than any nuclear weapon. Verse number two. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient parents, unthankful and unholy. A group of people marching in the streets were recently photographed carrying a sign that says, when Jesus Christ returns, we'll kill him again. And yet, that was in the United States. Let me put those devils on notice. When Jesus comes back this next time, ain't nobody going to be pulling on his beard and spitting on him and smacking him and killing him. They're going to be hauling for the rocks to hide him. They're going to be trying to get away from him. Because he's not coming back as a lamb next time. He's coming back as a lion. You need to understand that. He will destroy his enemies with the very brightness of his coming. But for now, Christians, but for now... We have to listen to the unholy tell us that good is evil and evil is good. It used to be that there was a litmus test for people to serve in our government and they had to have a certain belief system or else they were not even qualified. But now if they do have that, they're not qualified. We have to watch as children turn against their parents. We have to watch the ungrateful demand that we give, give, and give, and then they spit in their face for us. We have to listen to boasting, arrogant, and prideful people that just like a common hog will not ever look up and thank the one that gave them life. The only way you can ever get a hog to look up is put them on their back. People are acting like hogs now. I know, I need to quit sugarcoating and get to the point and quit beating around the bush, but I'll get there, y'all. Just be patient with me. <laughs> Bible says in verse 3 that these people will be without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. The word said that people in the end times would not even have natural affection. And now we're seeing that fulfilled in our streets. Saw a picture of two male soldiers, I think it was at West Point, were photographed getting married and kissing each other. That's about the nastiest thing I'd ever seen in my life. And there stood all their supporters applauding them. I, I'm not sure if y'all have picked up on this, but that ain't natural. Anybody surprised? That's not natural, two men kissing each other and getting married. 
Not natural affection. God says it's an abomination. But you know what? The entire world now, not just us, but the entire world has become obsessed with it. Completely obsessed with it. I've never seen anything like that in my life, and I used to wonder why. Why would the whole world go nuts over something like that? Well, I believe that the Antichrist, based on Daniel, will be a homosexual. I think he will be. From what I can read, I believe that's what he's going to be. And I believe that what we're seeing is the world getting ready to receive him right now. And you know what? They're ready. They're ready. European Union said if Satan himself would come on the scene and give them a good financial plan, they would welcome him. They sure did. They said that out of their own mouth. Well, guess what? He'll come and he'll set it right for you for a little while, but you're not going to like it. The whole world's getting ready. We have seen 60 million mothers. Think about this for a minute. 60 million. That's a fifth of the population of the United States. 60 million mothers murdered their babies in America since 1973. In this country alone. Just in America. And it's applauded. And we give our tax money to do it. Does anybody think that God's not going to judge us for that? Anybody think we're going to get away with that? With 60 million murders and God's going to turn his head? Then we had a picture of a group of these so-called pastors and priests. were standing around dedicating an abortion clinic. And I reckon because they were wearing robes and collars and everything else, that made them official. That made them okay. Dedicating an abortion clinic. And they had the nerve to say, it's to the glory of God. Does anybody's head feel like blowing up in here right now? We're going to have to be mopping brains off the wall here if it keeps doing that. I'm kidding you not. I mean, no wonder I got a bottle of Maalox on my office desk. I'm starting, like I said last week, I'm ready to start on a fresh bottle. Remind me to get some Maalox on my way home today. Maybe a little something stronger than that. Maybe it's that and Pepto mixed together. Lord have mercy. They said it's to the glory of God. Then they said it was God's work. Let me tell you what Jesus says to these so-called clergy. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I never knew you. That's what every one of them is going to hear. Jesus said, let me tell you something, folks. Jesus said it would be better for you if a millstone were tied around your neck and you were drowned in the depths of the sea than to hurt one of his little ones. That came out of our Lord's mouth. With filth like Planned Parenthood around. And they, they are, they're filth. I don't care who says it, who hears it. If they tell them that's what I said, I'll tell them that in court. You're filth. You can bet we are in the last days when you see them parading around and acting like they're the greatest things in the world. It was founded by a devil by the name of Margaret Sanger whose goal was to destroy black children. That's what she said out of her own mouth. And she said she wanted to eradicate the world of black babies. And they still, people keep marching on in there, giving them tax money. Oh, they're so great. They're going to bust hell wide open, every last one of them. Bible said then there'd be false accusers coming in these last days. And despisers of those that are good. Anybody in here thinking about running for office and making a stand on righteousness when you do? Well, people are going to come pouring out of the closet swearing that you harassed or molested them 40 years ago. Yeah. They will. People have lied so much nowadays they could beat a polygraph. Don't think nothing of it. The president, oh, don't get political, Dave. I can because I got the microphone. 
The president started bringing jobs back to this nation where people can go back to work and now he says they now they say he's mentally ill. Someone the other day told me that Trump was insane and I told him I, I can't understand you. You got that Tide Pod in your mouth. <laughs> Spit it out. I can't understand what you're saying. Lord have mercy. In the 60s, we put a man on the moon, and now we're putting men in women's bathrooms and Tide Pods in our mouth. Yeah. Have we lost our minds? Yeah. That's all we can brag on is crap like that. Mm. And now our prestigious governor was photographed walking down the street with a hat on his head that was fashioned after female genitalia. And he's going to say that somebody ain't right in the head? What he needs is a hat to reflect his true nature. He needs a Che, che Guevara shirt on and a hammer and sickle hat on the top of his head, and he'd be just about right. Don't tell me that we're not living in the end times when people think that evil is good and good is evil. Then in verse 4, it said that these people will be traitors Heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Just like Judas, many people are willing to sell out our Lord and Savior for something that brings them personal gain. Loving the pleasures of the world far more than any love they have for God. And that's even in the churches today. That's going on in the churches today. A God and God's house and all the other things are a sideline, if you will. You know, I remember, and I might, it might be because I'm old, but I remember at a time that everything but the police station and the hospital were closed on Sunday. Now everything but Chick-fil-A and Boomer's Barbecue are wide open on Sunday. God bless Chick-fil-A. God bless them. We have forgotten how to be solemn. We have forgotten how to be holy. We have forgotten how to be set apart from the world. And now people today are walking away from the church in droves because the pastor makes them uncomfortable when it comes to their lifestyle. And they go shopping around to try to find one that won't preach on it. But you know what? It ain't the preacher. It's the Word of God. The Word of God never changes it. It makes us all uncomfortable when we read it. As a matter of fact, if the preacher doesn't make you uncomfortable, he's not doing his job. If you go out to church feeling good about yourself, somebody failed. Half the time, I feel like I need to get down there at the invitation before anybody else does. But i got to wait on y'all. <laughs> so I come in here on the off hours and do it. Half of the sermons I preach, preach me under conviction. Then the Bible says finally that in the last days there will be people that have a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof from such turn away my favorite satire website is babylonb.com that's got to be about the funniest thing i've ever seen but they tell a lot of truth in it tongue in cheek they reported one time that the holy spirit had left a mega church because the smoke machine broke down and it looks like a real website and then they reported that a third of a church died from starvation because the service lasted more than an hour. <laughs> the reason some of these churches are running smoke machines is because the pastor's blowing smoke. And he don't want you to see it. Then you got these grinning pastors on TV. Now I wish I could grin like that, but half of my teeth are gone. I got a cap right here that I have to take on and off three or four times a day and re-glue it because I'm too doggone cheap to go see a dentist. And scared too. 
<laughs> Ain't gonna lie about that. I'd rather somebody take me out back and beat me in that parking lot than go to a dentist. Don't get no ideas. <laughs> but this grinning pastor will get up there and tell you that your best life is now. Dear God, what a lie. Anybody in here think your best life is now and you're just going to get better as you get older, aren't you? If you believe that, I got some land to sell you after church today. Oh my gosh. The older you get, the longer it takes to get out that bed in the morning. And I hate it because when I step out the shower, I step into this big full-length mirror and I go, oh my God, what did I do to myself? Donna's a brave woman. And it ain't gonna get no better. I'm telling you, nothing improves with age. Whoever told you that's lying to you. Things start breaking down and hurting and aching and all that. This is not your best life now. If I thought this was my best life now, I'd exit out of here as fast as I could. I am waiting for the day when I get a new body. And I don't have no aches and pains and everybody in here with the different diseases that you got and the different troubles that you've got, that's going to be gone. This is not your best life now. Your best life is when you're in the, in the face of Jesus. That's when you get your best life. Wait till Joel Olstein gets about 65 and let's see if he talks that trash. <laughs> That's the one thing that I can rest on is all my other friends are going to get fat and old before long too if the Lord tarries. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at that. That's ugly. <laughs> then these pastors get on TV telling you to send in your seed faith offering. And they'll come up with a figure that God told them the other night. I don't sleep much, and so I, I watched some of this during the night, and, and it was $58. God told me to tell you to send me $58. Then it was $111 one time and stuff. That's crazy. That is, you know where your tithes and offerings are supposed to go? In your local church, where that pastor will preach your funeral, will marry your children. Go see if Mike Murdoch will come running when you ask him when you need him to come see you in the hospital. Put it in the church where you worship. You want some power in your life? You don't need special lighting, you don't need a smoke machine. You want power in your life, all you need is a repentant spirit and a broken heart that's willing to turn from your sin. All you need is, this is wonderful, when we bought this, this old altar was in here and I thought, oh my God, that is so wonderful. Here's an old fashioned altar where you can come and pray. You want some real power in your life? Get in the house of God and be faithful and read your Bible and pray. You want some real power? Start serving God and start witnessing to people. That's where you'll find the power. Folks, we're going to need it in the days to come. We're going to need the power. It is so important that we get closer and closer together as a church family and we make a stand for what is right and we don't back down and that we're faithful to serve God. Perilous times, yep, they're here. This is no longer preaching on prophecy. It's no longer all my life I would tell people of what was coming. It's here right now. It's here now. Wake up, people. Look around. Don't be like the frog in the pot and wait till it's boiling to try to get out and it's too late. Be aware of what's going on around you and the evil that's in this world and make a stand against it. Pray. Pray and get a hedge of angels around you. Talk to the Lord. Pray for your family. Pray for your children. Pray for your spouse. Pray for your neighbors. Because the perilous times are upon us right now.
right now. Let's pray. Father, I just ask that you would speak to each and every heart that's in here this morning, that they would make the right decision, that they would do the right thing that would please you. And we thank you ahead of time for that in Jesus' name. Folks, this is the time to begin to gather to pray. This is the time to be aware of what's going on in the world and make sure that you're walking with the Lord, that you're right with him. Turn away from the things that the devil is using to distract you and lie to you and make you believe other things and focus on God's word. Focus on, on, on being in his house. Focus on worshiping together. Get the power back in your life because you're really going to need it in these last days. Whatever decision you have to make this morning, whatever it may be, I'm going to have some folks to stand down here if you need them to pray with you. Whatever it may be, would you come and make that decision? If you need someone to pray, we have an altar here and, and they'll pray with you. Maybe you just need to come and pray on your own. But as we stand, whatever the need there is on your heart, we're going to ask you to come. Whatever the need is. If the Lord's dealing with your heart, shall we stand? We have folks here that'll pray with you. Come and say, take, tell them to pray with me. Pray, just pray with me, and they'll be glad to do that. Come and pray. Lifted my face while the storm howls above me. These are perilous, perilous times, folks. Come and make your life right with Him today. pray with you this morning. Come on. Let's make this right before him today. Many times Satan whispered there is no need to try for there's no Anybody that would come and stand in for Pastor Carl Martin out there toward Amherst. He really needs some prayer this morning. Him and his family. Would anybody stand in for him and we'll we'll pray? Okay, come on down. That would be great. Pastor Carl Martin and his family. And uh, Roger, if you would please, brother. Y'all gather around. Let's, it's just unspoken, but it's a really special need for him today.
want to remind you of our Wednesday night Bible study. We're back downstairs in the chapel at 7 o'clock at that time. And we're going to begin Easter play practice very, very soon for the children. Hopefully this Wednesday. So if you think that your children would be interested, please bring them. Bring them. We'll be picking cards yeah. and learning about the story of Easter so that they can share it with you. We're also looking at beginning a young people or children's Sunday school uh, starting around March, probably the, maybe the first week, uh, weekend in March. And so think about bringing your children, being part of that. We have a great adult class in here, so yeah. you can come and join us there while your children are upstairs. But kids need a Bible education now more yes. than ever, and as yes. often as we can possibly give it to them. And so please pray about being part of that. And then, of course, every Friday night at 630, we're downstairs, and that's where we hook up to the power. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Glenn, I've already seen a couple of prayer requests posted that have been answered that we had Friday night. And uh, you may not even be aware of it yet. And so it's really great. And, and so if you, you, that's, a, that's how it works, folks. That's how it works. And so let's, let's be serious about this thing of serving God. And by the way, the reason that everything looks so bright is Bobby Woody is the only person brave enough to go up yes. there and replace them bulbs. Thank that, you. That, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, 